using a similar to OpenGL uh, subset of JavaScript functions. But here we have also another orthogonal decision. Which time will we at control of the pace of our animation? Mm. Here, the best choice is request animation frame. It's a new API from W3C that is synchronized with the refresh rate of the display. So no oversampling of subsampling is accomplished, but the right sampling. But when it's not available, we have to polyfill it or to shim it in order to get uh, support. The second issue is user input collection. How can we accurately gather user input and interactivity? So theoretically, dumb events timestamps are millisecond accurate, but this is not necessarily true in every operating system or user agent. So some developers usually <laughs> tend to implement platform dependent hacks like Java applets to access nanosecond timing from JavaScript or vendor specific solutions like from Interval and so on. The good news here is that there is another new API providing a monotonically increasing timing function with some millisecond resolution. And it's very easy to use just one method now, and that's it. And the last issue that I will comment is real-time communications. During the last years, we have been using AJAX to create an asynchronous channel between the client and the browser. But when we need communication from the opposite way, from server to client, we, we face problems. So that's the reason why WebSockets were, were invented. And despite they have some problems uh, with security right now, they are solving them and are, it, it is a very promising technology. At the same time, there are some alternatives, more ambitious ones, that uh, provide uh, oh, WebRTC and they, they try to provide real-time communications between browsers directly without requiring proprietary plugins. Yeah, they rely on two APIs, Pure Connection API, which is in charge of all the communications stuff, network other translations, some servers, and RTP streaming, peer-to-peer mm, -peer communication, and so on, and get user media to get native access to the webcam, the microphone, and so on. So, these are our conclusions about this HTML5 revolution. Well, we already know that many of these specifications are still under heavy development, and that it's not easy to find living instances of research-related use. But we do believe in it, that this technology will be the future of the web. And therefore, our purpose was to provide a roadmap to this new land of opportunity for our simulations and experiments. That's it. Thank you very much.